And inside is... Dabby! Oh, an inspector, I guess. I'm assuming she got attacked by... Giselle, maybe? Makes sense. She even has a knife. Uh, is that Abby? Oh my, it's a detective. So you're still alive. You're not looking so hot yourself, Abby. Don't move. I'll kill you if you come any closer. I don't think you have an energy to do that. You're in pretty bad shape. Should you use a first aid kit? Or spray some green herbs in, in your face or something? I don't know, eat some green herbs? Just rub it into the wounds? <sighs> or you mix it with... Uh, I should forget what you mix it with. You mix it with green and blue, right? Or is it green and red to make better healing? Anyway, <sighs> leave me alone. I don't need to... I don't need you to tell me what I should do. I don't need anyone's help. Hmm. Her blood is quite dark. The liver may be badly damaged. In such a condition, a first aid kit won't do much. Detective, I guess you want to ask me a few things. I'll tell you everything I know. However, I only have one condition. What's that? That you kill Vincent. I, yeah, I knew it, you know. Even, well, I guess they were working up or working together uh, up to this point. But I guess she was betrayed. I, I knew Vincent seemed to have some motivations of his own, you know, but anyway. Also, her liver was damaged. Did she get shot or something? I'm not sure. Hmm. He betrayed our organization. I don't even know what he's thinking anymore. If you don't put a stop to him, he'll destroy the world. That's why you have to kill him. Don't worry. Getting rid of him was my plan all along. There's some things I'd like to ask you. Could you tell me? Uh, you know, we're just interrogating her. Getting her testimony out. What happened, um, at that time when Thomas was killed? No. We already solved that mystery, but anyway. How about the current situation? Abby, what happened after you disappeared? You know what happened. We programmed the corpses of Jacob and the others to hunt you down and kill you all. Oh, I know that all too well. You really went out of your way for that. You also sent that spider monster after us, didn't you? That's right. Watching you escape from that was quite interesting. Not that it matters anymore. This much I knew, but why are you so agitated? You just mentioned Vincent. He told me to check if you were killed. If you somehow survived, I was supposed to kill you myself. However, he tricked me. He programmed some corpses to attack me. He programmed to attack you. So you were attacked by the same zombies that attacked us. Normally, I would not be defeated by a corpse, but Vincent planned this well. He tricked me into a situation that I could not escape from, and I was completely unprepared for it. Again, we were how like Abby, like a lot of characters are just little girls, <laughs> I feel like, but Abby in particular seems to be have like superpowers, by the way. She normally does have like super strength or something, I don't know. It's very powerful for such a small anime girl, but anyway. Vincent is a man whose actions are unpredictable. I should have been more careful. So Vincent betrayed you. What happened to Giselle? After our confrontation with her, I thought she went to seek you out. She's dead. What? Really? She died off screen? Is that really what happened? That's kind of, uh, anticlimactic, really. Or should I say, as good as dead. She attacked us, but I think she under underestimated us. It turned out she was very professional at first, but in the end, she was outnumbered. We captured her, and we'll use her to achieve our goals. As soon as we're done with her, she'll be killed. Okay, she's not dead dead, but... I guess she's she has been captured. Your goals. Hang on. Why why you didn't kill us in the first place? Was it because of that unlock code that the killer Giselle has? What's that code anyway? The code unlocks the research that was encrypted by one of the island's researchers. When we decrypted, we were able to bring back the project of absolute immortality that's hidden on this island. Of course! Of course, the whole objective, you know, the whole like catalyst for all of this was the secrets of immortality. I am assuming the zombies are just like an, uh, like a side effect of that immortality, but really they want real immortality, I guess. Um, and I just play Sekiro, so like Sekiro, I have that on the mind, because Sekiro's whole theme of that game, at least in its story, was also about how immortality was a bad thing, so quite a coincidence. Anyway, uh, that's, why we were, uh, that's why we were after it. So you were helping Giselle in exchange for that. We didn't help her. We were merely observing her from the sidelines. She did anom uh, anonymously offer us the unlock code as a bargaining chip. We're not that stupid that we would trust her without verifying it was true or not. In order to verify it, we pretended to cooperate with her. It appears that she threatened Sir Raymond with revealing the secrets of the island. That's why Sir Raymond was so eager to stop her. So that's why he sent all those invitations. All of the letters he sent contained detailed information that only people connected to the island would know. Sir Raymond was afraid that the truth about the island would be revealed, so he wanted to uncover the identity of the person who threatened to betray him. 
as he expected, the sub managed to make her way under the guest list. Controlling your opponent by threats and subversion, it's rather brilliant. So knowing all of this, you simply observed Giselle. You should have realized that she was planning to kill Sir Raymond. Sir Raymond was just another obstacle. His death would be in our interest. Oh, okay. So Vincent, I, I really thought Vincent actually cared about Sir Raymond. I guess not. They actually didn't care about Sir Raymond at all. All right. However, we could not be involved with his murder. If the unlock code had turned out to be fake, we might have been killed next. So although we wanted Sir Raymond dead, she would have been, she would have to be the one who took his life. We only aided her a little bit by deciding how the rooms were allocated and destroying the communication equipment. I see. So you really were behind that. Giselle wouldn't have enough time to do that herself. When Sir Raymond's body was discovered, Giselle gave us definitive proof that Unlock Code was real. That's when we decided on our course of action, eliminating all witnesses and obtaining the research of this island for ourselves. Those are quite some drastic actions to take for a code that you haven't been able to verify yet, to be willing to kill so many people for that. But you don't understand the allure of the Unlock Code. It's the final key to the power that's hidden on this island. With it, we'll be able to change the laws of nature. Huh. Now it's not a time for idle chapter. Or chapter chatter, rather. <laughs> uh, about Vincent's plan. What's Vincent's goal? What is he trying to achieve? Who knows? I know that he's trying to get his hands on the island's research, but I don't know why. If he only... If only he was just a spy from another organization. But it would be really bad if he's selfish and driven by narcissism. Vincent told me that a new world would begin, and this island would be its ground zero. Do you know what he meant by that? If that is the, if that is that true, or if that is that true, no. If that is true, then... Ugh, oh, this is really bad. So he is a selfish narcissist after all. I wouldn't originally evolve this island and went many checks and tests that would have limited anyone selfish. Vincent and I are from the same organization, and I thought I knew him. I'd never seen him behave like this before, though. Looks like he's trying to get his hands on the research of this island. Does he want to rule the world? A fool. Indeed, the research on this island is quite dangerous. It would really be bad if it fell into the wrong hands. If that should happen, it will be the beginning of chaos. The world order will collapse. So... In a nutshell, Vincent is trying to obtain the research for himself and will kill all of us? I'm afraid so. His real goal is probably the one, the one piece of research still hidden on this island. Absolute immortality. Absolute immortality. You saw those zombies, right? What if they were actually conscious? He would be able to create real abominations. Yes, that might be Vince's real objective. Vince is being driven by his selfish desires. You need to kill him, Ikeda. Yes, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Well, what on earth were they developing on this island? They were studying the science of immortality. It was a project that would extend lifespan indefinitely cure disease and, mix, and make humans immortal. That's the real research that was carried out on Shiro Nagasu Island. Immortality? I thought they were developing, developing monsters on this island. Those monsters were only byproducts. They were the flawed experiments in the middle of immortality research. They managed to make use of them somehow. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I see, immortality. Looks like Neneko was right. So does that mean that the research was completed? You saw those zombies and that monster, didn't you? Nobody wants to be immortal if it means becoming like one of those brain-dead abominations. They came close to discovering the secret of immortality, but something went wrong. They are planning to take their immortality research into a different direction. A different direction? You mentioned they were taking a different direction. You've experienced that technology up close already. It's a brain hacking technology. You can just do that, by the way. Brain hacking goo. I feel like that's like a... I don't know. I feel like that's a focal point in some other anime you know like brain hacking i'm not sure i mean was it like the chaos head and chaos child or something no those are like slightly different though anyway whatever brain hacking <laughs> the next step is achieving immortality by digitizing human consciousness i guess you know just upload your brain into the vr uh world and just live on the internet you know i mean i wouldn't be opposed to that i mean if it worked properly i guess and that's like a plot for like a, a different game as well, I feel like. Anyway, I see. So that computer was. The scientist left the technology unfinished. He managed to completely emulate the human brain by tra uh, transferring its data to another medium and running it from there as it was an actual brain. But that was just a copy of the brain being emulated on a computer. 
so the researchers gradually start to mechanize brain cells. Just like regeneration, human consciousness can become immortal that way. However, it was impossible to do so by current technological capabilities. Eventually, the research was abandoned, and only brain hacking and awareness digitization technology remained. I see. So they only managed to create technology that can read and write information to and from brains. And the island's immortality research was abandoned. Okay, so that kind of... I mean, it's still kind of like, you know... In the realm of science fiction, but... You know, I guess that kind of explains why Ikeda was in that machine in the first place. But it wasn't perfect yet, you know. It could really make, uh, you know, immortality in that sense, but uh, not quite. The Absolute Immortality Project was completed. Huh? Wait, wasn't it imperfect? What do you mean? Was it completed after all? Afraid of the implications of absolute immortality, a researcher purposely created an imperfect organism and concealed its, its existence. We only discovered this after he had committed suicide. The researcher had put his research data into a special security system and it coded with a strong code. The researcher's death and the inaccessibility of the data caused the research on this island to stagnate. I see. Did Rio know that the research on the island was abandoned because of that, I wonder? Absolute immortality should never fall into the hands of a selfish person. I see. The data of absolute immortality locked the way out of reach. By the way, Abby, have you ever heard the name Aurora? Who's that? I don't remember anyone called that. Giselle called that creature the demon of Shiranakusu Island, Aurora. Do you know anything about that? No. However, I believe that N131 was created from a human girl. It could have been the girl's name. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I mean, that it's still kind of speculation on the character's part, but that kind of confirms my hypothesis as well. I believe Aurora is, yeah, the demon. She was like, you know, experimented on and everything, and she turned into a monster. And the reason why Giselle was able to control her was because maybe they were friends, right? Aurora and Giselle knew each other when they were used as, as experiments on the island, most likely. And that's why, that's partially why Giselle wants revenge, right? For her friend and for herself as well, maybe. That's what I was thinking. But uh, she, Aurora also appears, I guess, in the, in the brain hacking technology as well. So maybe remnants of her personality is also in the, in like the weird virtual world, maybe? Hmm. I don't know how that, if that's connected. Like maybe some of her consciousness is still in that monster somehow, like remotely? Well, anyway. But yeah, it could have been a girl's name. I think that the girl who was turned into N131 had a different name though. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe Aurora, I mean, maybe Aurora is a nickname, you know? That's what I'm thinking as well. But anyway, perhaps it was a secret name. I heard that the girls on this island often gave each other secret names. A secret name? Could Giselle have been a survivor from this island after all? Nobody has ever escaped from this island. No, wait. Come to think of it, I heard there was only one girl who did run away from the island, but she was found dead. Could she have faked her own death? The girl could have been Giselle. It's unlikely, but it could be possible. I see. That's why N131 didn't attack her. <sighs> hey, are you alright? Hang in there. This is the end of the road for me. I'm counting on you, Sen Ikeda. Stop, Vincent. Abby, do you have any last words? No, nothing. Just that... What is it, Abby? I've been my organization's lapdog. I now wish I'd live my own life instead. I know what you mean. Uh, bleh. Well, <laughs> Abby... Is she dead? No, she only fainted. However, she won't last long with these wounds. <laughs> what, are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Are you really gonna treat her wounds? I can't leave her alone, because she's a, sh you know, anime girl, you know? all sh Apparently all short anime girls have plot armor, by the way. Alex, Neneko, and Akira, and Abby, they all seem to fit this archetype that the developer seems have you know seems to, to love drawings so i assume they also have plot armor somehow i don't know i don't think anyone who fits the little girl archetype has ever died so far but i mean unless it's a bad ending i guess it was a bad ending you know doesn't matter but you know it's not canon anyway i can't leave her alone but i, I could put her over misery but still you might tell me i'm crazy for saying this but she's just another victim of this island i feel bad for her she also realized that she's done bad things. Anyway, let's go over what she told us. They were researching the science of immortality on this island. Those zombies and monsters were results of this research. 
I would never uh, believed it if I hadn't seen it in my own eyes. I guess you've earned my trust, Ikeda. Oh, and there's also that brain hacking machine. It looks like repurposing that technology has allowed them to make copies of and even access the human brain. That's really amazing technology. It's such a waste to keep this research in the facility on an isolated island. Yeah, I mean, that's the downside. I mean, I mean, theoretically, I guess. Or, that, that, I, I'm, you know, theoretically, it's actually a, a wrong way to use <laughs> theoretically. But anyway, um, or is that, well, oh, actually, well, I'm thinking like when people say in theory, or that's a theory, that's just a theory, it's actually using the word wrong. But I guess theoretically, it's still, but anyway, I'm, who cares? What I'm trying to say, <laughs> by the way, is that the downside of like, I guess this kind of technology is putting your consciousness inside like a virtual world is that it's only copying, right? Just like, you know, when you copy files and all that, you know, you don't actually like the, the original person doesn't actually get to be immortal, you know, it's just a copy of yourself in that world. So, you know, it feels like that's kind of a waste because you don't like you yourself aren't immortal. Again, that's kind of exploring in a different game. I feel like anyway, uh, it's really amazing that such a way to keep this research in the physical on the island. island. Maybe it was that one researcher who created the program. Hmm. Although they thought their research had failed, one researcher secretly managed to complete Project Absolute Immortality. This researcher feared its power, so he encrypted the data. An unlock code is needed to access it. Well, what is this Absolute Immortality really like? The sequential replacement of organic brain cells by mechanical ones appears to be difficult. I wonder if this is so-called immortality is really biological. We don't know much about it. But apparently it makes the subject immortal while also maintaining human intelligence. If Vincent wants to unlock code, he probably wants the power of immortality for himself. And Giselle, who knows the unlock code, has been captured by Vincent. He might be hacking to her brain right now to extract that information from her. Giselle, in any case, we don't have much time. If Vincent gets his hands on absolute immortality, it's game over. We have to find a way to stop him before he does. That's the only way we'll be able to survive. If he obtains that kind of power, things will become really bad. He'll create immortal soldiers and will eventually rule the entire world. It's just inconceivable. No, it's just inconceivable. A very scary thought. We're running out of time. We have to get to Vincent. Happy. Sweet dreams. No, I guess we just leave her. Uh, but I assume we treated her wounds, so I mean, she might survive, but anyway. This is probably inside the room at the back. Neneko, can you open this door? It might take some time, but I probably can. But isn't it dangerous? Of course it's dangerous. I'll take care of you if anything happens. When you're ready to open the door, just hide behind me. If anything bad happens, you'll run to the fine room, okay? Got it. Okay. I'm ready for anything. I don't think anything can surprise me at this point. Uh, let me jack in. Jack in. You know, it's like cyberpunk or whatever. I'll, uh, I'll open it. Just a second. Are you done yet? Sh shut up, annoying Akira. I'm still working on it. I just heard uh, I just heard a noise behind me. I can't hear it. I don't hear anything. It's probably just your imagination. Hey, Neneko, if you could speed this along, it would be really helpful. You're telling me. Hey, guys. Akira, don't look behind you. Give you some time on your hands. Could you count how many strands of hair Neneko has? <laughs> One, two, three. Uh, wait a minute. Is this impossible? Are you making a fool of me? Hey, Neneko, hurry up already. Neneko. Or Neneko. I'm working as fast as I can, I really am. I gotta do the hacking thing where I type really fast, you know, somehow, and that works. It's open. Let's hurry inside. Okay. We go in. Huh? Well, that's a lot of organs and, you know, bodies, I guess. Hey. What is this? Ah. What is this? What is this? Corpses piled up on the floor. Uh, there's some kind of creatures inside those culture tanks. Those things appear to be interested in us. It might be dangerous to keep going forward right now. We should investigate this area first. Okay. Body parts from people who work in the mansion are scattered all over the place. I guess they were cornered and killed by the monster here. I don't think I've ever seen corpses this badly mutilated. It's horrible. Uh, I, think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna throw up. What could have happened to them? Uh, at least it looks like there isn't a monster here now. I guess we're safe for now. Looks like those culture tanks are full of monsters. Let's hope they won't come out of there. I assume this is where, like, one of the bad endings where uh, Neneko dies, I guess, or captured by the monster. I guess she ends up here, by the way. That's where it was. Culture tanks. I wonder what's inside them. 
Those creatures look like that monster, but I can't clearly see inside the tanks. What if one of them suddenly breaks and whatever is inside gets out? That definitely won't happen, right? They don't look that dangerous to me, but I wouldn't guarantee that it won't happen. However, everyone is freaking out. Hard as it may be, I should try to make them feel at ease. Nothing, people, nothing to be worried about. If those tanks were made to contain monsters, they shouldn't be able to break. Alright, and I don't see any cracks. They, they can't break, which means that whatever is inside them won't be able to get out. So nothing to be worried about. To tell you the truth, not that you said that, I feel even more on edge. I've seen this kind of scene in movies. Just when you think bad things will happen, they definitely will. So they definitely will break. I'm sure of it. What? Are they gonna break? I'm scared. Eesh. What do you expect me to do? I wonder where that door leads. I think it probably leads to a laboratory. I haven't seen a laboratory yet around here. A laboratory? I don't like the sound of that. I bet it's full of nasty things. We've come this far. There's no turning back. No matter what happens, we have to keep pushing forward. I know, but... You're right. No matter what happens, we have to keep going. I don't like this one bit. Some kind of monsters are moving around inside. I even won't be able to survive in there. Uh, some kind of creatures inside those tanks are looking at us. Uh, they appear to be very interested in us. Maybe they think we're food? If they manage to get out of those tanks, they'll probably attack us immediately. If that happens, we'll end up like those corpses there. Don't worry. Uh, as soon as we we'll figure out what's going on here, we'll move on. I also see some bodies of younger people there. Could they be? Yes, they might be the girls who are in prison here. Some of them appear to be mansion staff, but the less mutilated corpses may have turned into those zombies we saw earlier. There's so many corpses here. Probably all the mansion staff has been slaughtered. This is horrible. Vincent did this. There's no doubt about it. He craves power so much that he's willing to do anything to get it. We can't let him get away from this. We have to stop him. I agree. A lot of guts. Though I'm worried about what's inside the culture tanks, I can't just keep looking at them. I should look elsewhere. And this is too much for me. I can't bear to look at this. I'll be scarred for life. Just pretend that it was all a bad dream and forget about it. I wish I could forget things that easily. But I guess it's a good thing that corpses have no trace of the original form. Could have been scary if it was just a bunch of body parts and organs. What a horrible, what a horrible thing to say, Alex. Hope you won't turn into a killer in the future. Better stay far away from me. Why would you say such a, why would you say such a thing? I'm well, thinking out loud. Stay away from me, you psycho. <laughs> it's not funny, you two. You're just, you know, we're just like having a comedy moment while we're just waiting, you know, wait, I assume waiting? Is that the right word? Waiting? Waist high, you know, through these body parts? It's very, very like, I assume some of them are very like, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Decomposed already, you know? It's just disgusting. <laughs> anyway. I don't care anymore. I can't tell which part of the body is just by- I, I can tell which part of the body is just, just by looking at it for a second. I'm just gonna stare at this in and nothing nowhere else. Uh, this situation is definitely bad for Neneko. My neck hurts. Uh, can I look at the ceiling too? The ceiling and the walls are too dark to see properly. I don't see any lights. Maybe they're not turn on right now. Even though there's no light coming from the ceiling, the room appears to be illuminated by the light coming from those culture tanks. Well, why did you look at the ceiling? Was there something else? Something uh, Something other? There was, wasn't there? Wait, what? Was there something there? Hey, get out. What was there? Was there a monster? Where? Where is it? There's nothing at all. I was just curious about the ceiling. Why are you curious about the ceiling? <laughs> They're all freaking out. I shouldn't waste any time on this nonsense. Why are you so silent, kid? Yeah, we're freaked out when I look at the ceiling. So I shouldn't look at it. Okay, sure you are. Ah, what's that there? There's nothing on the ceiling. Nothing to be worried. Really? I should finish checking. Okay. So elsewhere... I'll make it up to you. Okay. The lock on this door looks similar to the last one. Neneko, can you unlock this door as well? I think I can, but how can I get there? There's no way I can reach it. I guess you just have to hold your nose and go through there. No, no way, I can't wade through a pool of guts. Give me a peek back. I guess I could do that, but I lose my balance and drop you into the pile of corpses. Why would you say such a thing? Are you messing with me? I guess I have to go by myself somehow. You could do it. Yeah, you you just go there. I'll just watch from here. Anyway, the door can wait. Anything else to look at? What's this one? I wonder why one of the culture tanks is empty. Why could that be? The second one from the right. Perhaps the monster we saw earlier came out of there? Could be. Imagine all of them being released. That would be pandemonium. As I save the game to make sure that there isn't like a section where we run away from all these monsters. Stop saying such nasty things. One of them might be bad enough. Do you really want to imagine when all of them are released? I wonder if that monster really came from this tank. If so, where do they keep the demon of Shiga Nagaso Island? N131. Probably somewhere else. Not that I can't right now. There's only one empty tank. That worries me. 
Why only the second one from the right? Oh, ah, okay. Was it hiding inside that culture tank? It looked empty to me. Or could it camouflage itself? Alex, are you okay? I think I just had an out body experience, but not right now. I don't think there's room in the monsters posing any threat to us. But we should not discard the possibility that they could break free. Let's move on. I have a feeling that I'm being driven to my death. Only those who take their chances will be able to survive. What are you talking about? You're just saying stuff, right? Uh, no, I've heard something like that before. You need to take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. Anyway, let's move on. Neneko, can you unlock the door? Eh, hope there's nothing scary behind this door. Something scary will come to us in this situation, I guess. Perhaps we should be ready just in case. You're right. I don't think we'd expect rainbows and unicorns behind that door. You know, what if we, what if there was? It was just suddenly rainbows and unicorns. No, this way. It was all just a big prank. Surprise. It's a birthday party. Uh, uh, you only say such nasty things, don't you? All right, I'm opening the door. And we're here. And he's doing the villain pose. And be like, Mwahahaha. I've done it, and now you will die, or whatever. I assume that's Giselle. Again, kind of killed off screen though. I, it was mentioned that she didn't completely die, but I guess in the end she did get murdered off screen or whatever. I don't know. What is this? Huh? Giselle! Akira, wait, don't move. Oh my. I wasn't expecting you to make it all the way here. You've been up to a lot, Vincent. It's time to end this. Sen Ikeda, and Neneko Izum Izumozaki. You're the X-Factors, the main characters of this video game. Without the two of you, none of the others would ever have ever reached this place. But that's of no consequence. The bigger, the bigger, bigger I can't speak. The bigger picture remains unchanged. You and I exist in wholly different dimensions. You're as insignificant as flecks of dust. You're already behaving like a god, Vincent. What are you going to do with absolute immortality? Are you going to rule the world? <laughs> the world. That's funny. But you're mistaken. Absolute immortality is the next step in the inevitable evolution of humanity. Too many fools do not realize this. The next step in human evolution. That's right. Just as we humans discovered fire and civilization, we must obtain immortality as well. You don't seem to understand that yet. Suppose a meteor is about to destroy the earth. Humanity will undoubtedly try to stop it by all means necessary. So why doesn't humanity stop the inevitability of death? Humanity is so foolish. This world is but briefly experienced by a few human observers. Once those observers die, it really means the end of the world. Humans have turned into a foolish, lazy species. I see it as my noble mission to avoid the inevitable onslaught of death. There's no need to thank me all at once. That's quite a speech. I have to say you're actually making some sense, but what about the lives of the girls who turn into monsters? Death may be the end, but you are the one who brought it to those girls. Small collateral damage, sacrifice so that humanity can arrive at a new stage in its evolution. Of course. <laughs> of course. If humanity can be saved at the expense of a few hundred girls, nobody would turn their salvation down. Only fools will be willing to die just so that some insignificant girls can live. Foolish. He merely, he, okay, this is like a, I wonder how the translation is, because this is just a reference to Castlevania, but foolish, humanity ill needs a savior such as you, you know, die monster, you don't belong in this world, uh, humanity ill needs a savior such as you, if what you're doing is for the sake of humanity, why did you have to kill the mansion staff, your real goal was obtaining that research for yourself alone, <laughs> yes, that is true, alright, I'll admit it. I'm the only one who is worthy of being immortal. The rest of you are just fools waiting for the end to come. I will become God and shall crush you. And now we have an RPG battle and I'll, I'll transform into like a big monster. No. A god, eh? Ridiculous. I'm sorry to have to be the one to break this to you, but you've been cancelled on social media. No. Kaboom. Okay. And then we shoot him and then everything is fine. We win. Yay. Did we do it? Huh? It's such big words, but that was surprisingly easy. Hmm. I wonder. I have a bad feeling about this. Vincent didn't even look like he was trying to escape. It's as if he just wanted to buy some time, doing his, like, big old villain speech. You guess right. What? If my back was really against the wall, do you really think I would give, like, a stereotypical villain speech like that one? Ha-ha! <laughs> okay. 
Still, this awesome power. My body hasn't become used to it yet. I'm like that one guy from Resident Evil, you know that guy? <laughs> anyway. Vincent, so you've already... N131 killed this vermin. That sound, it's that monster. This is bad. Akira, wake just all up. No need to tell me, I know what I have to do. I guess we'll just take that body real quick. I guess she was maybe still alive. Hey, s stop right there. We're not your enemies. Don't move. Why don't you kill them? N131, I command you, kill them. Just as Abby said. The same thing that happened to Akira and Giselle encountered the creature in the mansion. The creature won't attack Giselle, or should I say it can't. I don't think this situation will last forever, so we have to find a way to escape. But there's nowhere to escape to. Wait, there is. There's a door on the right. All right, let's go through there. Hurry. Akira, how is Giselle doing? She's lost consciousness, and there's so much blood. You could save her. We've got to escape from here first. You useless monster. I'll rip you to shreds later. <laughs> My body is... Ugh. I can feel it. Okay, and he just took off his shirt. Nano machine, son! <laughs> uh, I can feel it. This moment, humanity has finally reached its next stage of evolution. Darn, it started. I have a run to the door. I won't let you get away. Nanako, lock it. Yes. You can't escape from me. A painful death awaits you all. Good. Alright, just turn into like a bodybuilder. Uh, hey, what's up, Mr. Gunny? By the way, I feel like I'm really close to the end here. But well, I guess we'll see. Anyway. You just bent that massive door. I don't know if you were been following this entire time, but I'm really close to the end of the story. That's all I'm saying, but anyway. Uh, th that's not humanly possible. I don't think Vincent is human anymore. He could, uh, Giselle is... I can't stop the bleeding. Well, that's right. I have to care of Giselle now. Alex, could you look for other ways out of here? Alright, leave it to me. I also look for something that can be used as a weapon. Thanks, Alex. Hmm. Looks like there are a couple of rooms here. I'm gonna save the game real quick. I mean, this looks this place looks uh, very much more maintained, by the way. Much cleaner. Hmm. There's another brain hacking computer. Oh, and there's a basic medical kit. I can take off Giselle's jacket and place her on the bed. I'll treat her wounds. Okay, Giselle, stay with me. This might be a bit rough, but I don't see any other way. I only know basic tactical field care. I wish Ria was with, with us now. We have to make do somehow. Please, you you're the only one who can do this. Don't worry. I'll take care of it, but you need to look the other way. I wasn't looking at all. Squelch. <laughs> Her organs have sustained considerable damage. There's several bleeding, uh, se severe bleeding as well. I can stitch her up in places, but that would be just patching her up a little bit. If Rio were here, she would have thought the same thing. In this condition, she won't have very long. Alright, I finished treating her for now. It's like, you know, just... Let's, like, put like a band-aid on it, you know? Giselle, you know, despite what we said earlier, you helped her. Come to think of it, if we hadn't helped Giselle back then, we would have all died. Hey. You know, so what are we gonna do about Vincent? The way he's going at it, he's gonna break down that door sooner or later. When that happens, he'll kill us all. Giselle is so badly injured, we'll have to kill Vincent before, uh, first before we can treat her any further. However, even a direct shot to the head of a 50 caliber machine gun probably won't stop that monster. We have to think of something. We need to get away from here. Yes, but we're not going anywhere with that monster out there. I asked Alex to look for other exits. However, the corridor is a dead end, and one of the two doors leads to this medical room. I highly doubt there's another way, uh, the other door is a way out. I'm back, sorry it took so long. Speak of the devil, did you find a way out of here? Unfortunately, no. There, is, uh, there are a storage room and a water tank nearby, but no exit. I even tried hitting the walls to check for a hidden door. Looks like there's a dead end. Or looks like this is a dead end. Mm, that's it then. Game over, man. <laughs> what are these references? I really, again, I don't know if the, if the translation is one to one or they really did make these really cheesy references, but <laughs> game over, man. Game over. No, um, he'll break down that door and slaughter all of us. Oh, it's not much of a weapon, but I found this. It's a syringe gun. This is. What is this? It's like a big syringe gun. Can we defeat Vincent with this? I that would be that simple. You're right. If we can defeat him with this, then that absolute immortality would be pretty useless after all. It's probably a sedative that was used on these on those creatures. 
I don't think it will work on Vincent. Also, injecting it would be too difficult. Alright, so now what? Or now what? If he breaks through that door, really? So after what all we've been through, this is how it ends. There has to be another way. A way to defeat Vincent. Is there something, anything? A way to undo absolute immortality? There is a way. Hmm. Giselle. Huh, Giselle? Are you awake? Giselle. To kill an immortal. You have to... Giselle, tell us how to kill him. We need to know now. Inside of... Oh no. Giselle fainted again. Was there really a way to kill an immortal? Giselle certainly seemed to know of a way. I wish she would have told us. If only there was a way to get the information from her from this like machine that like totally brain hacks you and then, you know, takes information from your brain or whatever. You can't. She's on the brink of death. You can't just force her to answer. There is a way. What do you mean? Oh, that's right. We can use that computer on Giselle's brain so she can tell us how to nullify immortality. I see. So we can find out what Giselle was about to say. We can connect Giselle to the computer and look at the information on the monitor over there. No. It would take too long to find out how to kill an immortal that way. Vincent used his computer to extract the absolute immortality on Lockco from Giselle's brain. But he couldn't see that Giselle also knows a way to nullify that immortality. So the information has to be stored somewhere deep inside her mind. We have to access that. What do you mean? If we can't use that computer, there's nothing we can do. We need to connect another person to this computer and have them enter Giselle's memories. That might be the only way. Of course. Uh, of course. We need, to, we need to do that. Was that was there a movie about that? <laughs> you know? In that case, uh, I should do it. I've been connected to such a computer before. I know how to disconnect from it. I'll go. If anyone can do this, then I'll go. Uh, Ikeda needs to stay here in case Vincent breaks through that door. No, I'll go. Let me go. I'll dive into Giselle's memories and find out who, how to kill it. Everyone, everyone wants to volunteer. No, no, no. None of you should go. Ikeda needs to stay here in case Vincent breaks down the door. And if the way to nullify immortality is complicated, the, you two may not be able to remember it exactly. But I have a photographic memory. That's why I'll go. In fact, I've already adjusted the program so that I can go right now. <laughs> you know, I've already, I've already did it. I'm way ahead of the game, baby. Are you sure about this, Nenako? It's the only way. The only way I could get out of uh, the only way I could get out of it was by shooting myself in the head of a gun. Would you be able to do something like that? If you mess this up, you'd be trapped inside the virtual world. I'm scared, but if I don't do this, we'll all die. I don't have a choice. Nanako. Alright. I believe in you. You can do this. I couldn't wish for a better partner. This isn't goodbye, you know. So don't say things like that. I'll just take care of this one thing and come back immediately. Well, now you're spoiling the moment. Nanako, I'll buy you the time you need to get out of there. Even if it kills me. You can do this. We can do this together. Oh, and Nikita, please don't die. Don't worry. I wasn't planning to. But I might die anyway, because it's not, it's, not, it's not a thing I can really have full control over. But anyway, I don't think that door will hold much longer. You can do this, Nanako. Come at me, Vincent. I'll give you a beating you'll never forget. With my bullets. Pew pew. Have a little boss battle. You know, Resident Evil style survival horror boss battle. Where I just kind of like run around each room and kind of like kite them, you know, a whole bunch. It's like a timer goes down. You gotta survive for that long. Objective is to survive. But... I guess we might not see that actually because uh, this is a visual novel by the way so we don't actually you know it'd be funny if the game suddenly turned into like, a 3d action game but no uh all i have to do is push the enter key on this computer right are you ready nanako yes all you have to do is push it but no don't push it yet so how do we bring you back do we have to do anything probably not the system is programmed to start once the brain awakens probably are you sure this is safe what if we won't be able to come back i've never done this before so I don't quite know what to expect. Huh. Well, there's no time to waste. Nedeko, if you don't come back, I'll play pranks on your body. If it doesn't happen, you have to come back. Don't say that. I'll do my best to come back. You better stop the system now, before I change my mind and run away. Alright, Nedeko, here goes. Jack in! Initializing NRS scan. Activating Steam receiver. Accessing memory. Commencing scan. Entering the memories of Subject A. Whoop. Actually, oh yeah, oh yeah, I, this also reminds me of uh, I, the Somnium Files, actually, you know? I did also do a playthrough of that. It was all about, like, you know, jacking into people's memories and all that, you know? <sighs> well, there you go. Save the game. And I guess we're gonna explore just how memories and uh, figure out what to do from there, I guess. Let's see. 
where I'm... I wonder where I'm going. They blindfolded me when I boarded the boat, so I can't see anything. This blindfold is so tight, it hurts. Hmm, actually. What perspective is this? Is this Giselle's perspective, maybe, when she was a kid? Hmm. Judging from the severe cold I felt when they pushed me into the car, this place has to be a far up north. I pressed the blindfold against the car window, loosening it a bit. You see outside. What a dreary scenery. Can't even trees grow here? This is a luxury car. This car is not normally used to transport slaves with. Maybe it's used for transporting clients? Unbelievable. This is already the third time. The third time this month. Hey, you know we're not supposed to talk while we're transporting cargo. Oh, give me a break. Say a few words is fine. She's coded red anyway. So it doesn't matter even if she hears anything. Coded. Okay, red. So he has a red ribbon. That means I assume... Experiments or organ? I'm not sure. I, I, I always forget. Yellow, blue, and red. I'm not sure which one's which. But I assume, you know, she dies, basically. She ends up dying. Or at least that's the plan, anyway. Uh, perhaps, but I can hear them talking. If by transporting cargo they're referring to me, what does coded red mean? I just wish the Ravy would understand how important resources are. We always end up getting blamed. Even so, obtaining the required number is that difficult, is it? Easy for you to say. You don't get it, do you? Sure, the number might not be that high, but I need to be selective. I can't just grab any girl and call it a day. If the quality level would be too low, I'd end up swimming with the fishes in the Bering Sea. You see what kind of stress I'm under, you know, kidnapping these children. <laughs> well, alright, I understand that's a dangerous job. <laughs> yeah, sure you do. The Bering Sea? Is this an island somewhere near the Lucian Islands? Looks like the discipline on this line has become lax. If I look carefully, I might be able to find a way to escape. Right, we're here. Our master will be waiting for you. Sheesh. I'll have to come up with excuses again. Hey you, get out of the car already. It hurts. I'm blindfolded, so what do they expect? Ouch. Some of the strands of my hair ripped off as they pulled the blindfold off. Is this the mansion they were talking about? Such a big building. I wasn't expecting to see this on an isolated Lucian Island. Come over here, follow me. Alright, well... I guess that's Sir Raymond. <laughs> oh god. I guess we're just, uh, you know, we're gonna be first hand see how, you know, horrible this place is. As like... A captured little girl. Hmm. Well, well, well. You sure took your time getting here. That was a very long trip. Huh? Hey, you say something, cat cut your tongue? Don't be rude to Sir Raymond. Hello. No, no, don't you worry. You must be tired of such a long journey. By the way, weren't you supposed to bring two more girls this time? Did something happen? Well, there was a problem the church was supplying us. She's the only one I could get this time. I'm terribly sorry. I heard about what happened in your church, but it isn't your job to make up for any shortages. I most certainly am paying you enough money for that. Yes, you're right. I promise I'll make it up for it in the future. I'll be looking forward to that. Oh, come here, dear. Let me show you around. Although he appeared to be kind at first, I can tell from his glance that he's cold-hearted. So he's definitely a bad guy as well. You know, everyone in this mansion. I can't trust the other servants either. I can't trust anyone who's also in my situation. So keep that in mind. I can only trust myself. This is my mansion. Please feel free to walk around here at your pleasure. I don't believe a word he's saying. It'd probably be a bad idea to walk around here by myself. Come over here. You must be hungry. Sit down. Let's get you something nice to eat. Thank you. A bad feeling about this. A place hidden in a remote island. They make me wear a blindfold. And I guess some of good food here. I really don't hope this will be my last meal. I can see the sea outside the window. Is it really in Lucian Island? Uh, Rembrandt's The Blinding of Samson hangs on the wall. A painting doesn't suit the atmosphere of a dining hall. It's a painting of Samson, who divulged the secret of his long hair. The source of his power was betrayed and murdered by his mistress. It feels like a warning. If you tell any secrets, this is how you want to end up. Why are you looking at that painting? Do you like it? No, I just thought it was unusual. I shouldn't let him know that I'm intelligent. I should act stupid in the future. I should pretend that I'm obedient and I won't rebel. Ah, uh, look, there's your meal. Have as much as you like. Thank you. The food is really delicious. I haven't had anything to eat or even drink for an entire day. Even if the food is poison, I have no choice but to eat it. I don't know why, but I can't stop shivering all over. Is it a fear of what happened next? No. It is like a feeling of impatience telling me I don't have time for this. I wish I had some time to enjoy this food. But why? Why should I hurry? I don't know. I'm scared. Was that good? Let me show you to a room. Uh, Green Sir Amos is the new girl. That's right. Could you show her to her room? Very well, young lady. I should take my leave. Ah, before I forget, let me give you this red ribbon. 
It's very important as it shows people who you are in this mansion. Never lose it. So Raymond ties a red ribbon to my hair. Thank you. A red ribbon. There's something sinister about it. I want to know why. I mean, I, I think red, I think red, I mean, it reminds me of blood, right? So red probably means like torture or something. Like, like the, the, the ribbon like uh, identifies what you can do to the girls, basically, if you're like a guest. So like red probably means like torture or something, if I remember correctly. Blue probably means like prostitution, right? And yellow means like, you know, organs, basically. You could like take the organs, maybe. That's what I'm thinking, but I don't remember exactly, though be different. I don't know. Well then, if you excuse me. Alright, you come over here. If you turn the wheel like this, the door will open. I always get permission first before crossing this bridge. After that, turn the wheel yourself, understand? I remember this door. Why is that? Why do I remember this strange door? You go there by yourself. Unlock it. Alright, now go. And that's why I guess they I assume they keep all the girls inside these, these buildings so that uh, it's kind of like a prison. They can't get out unless they're allowed to leave. But anyway, and I enjoy that I can't open at will and the high power lighting that shines on the bridge. This place looks like a prison. Don't forget to always wear your ribbon, all right? Red. That means your room is over here. Follow me. This is your room. Go inside. What's going to happen to me? No questions. Go inside. Do you lock it from the outside? But what would happen to being allowed to walk around the place? This is totally different. What a terrible place. This really is a prison. Why am I here alone even though there are four beds? I have a really bad feeling about this. I'm feeling sick. It looks like the tired and anxiety I was fighting on the boat are finally catching up with me. Right now I can't. Is the wash basin, a basin over there? No. This room isn't as good as the other ones. Hmm. Okay, and we kind of look like, uh, yeah, so interesting. I'm assuming, I don't know. We're, I assume we're Giselle, but we're also um, Neneko, right? At the same time. Her skin looks different, I feel like. I don't know. Or maybe it's the same. Maybe it is Giselle. I don't know. Anyway, it's hard to tell. But maybe it is Giselle. I'm thinking like we're kind of like a combination of Giselle and Neneko, right? Well, looking at the picture here. Uh, I guess it's, it's- I don't know. I, I assume her skin looked more pale, but maybe it was just the lighting. Anyway, I guess it is just so. Anyway, oh, what happened to me? I'm feeling so anxious and tense. What? Is this me? This feels weird. As if my face is not my own. Yeah, I mean, again, my 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 theory is like, yeah, it's a combination of Giselle and Neneko, right? I assume this choice matters, maybe. Uh, what if I just don't- what if I just say nothing? Hmm, must be- must be seeing things. I have a feeling I forgot about something very important. Eh, don't worry about it. Forgot. Isn't it strange to have a feeling that's really important? That I shouldn't be able to forget it. I might not be able to forget anything. Why am I thinking that? My thoughts be hazy. Who am I? Hmm. Okay, well, I guess this doesn't matter. Did something just- Am I just imagining things? Cause I'm, you know, you know, you know, uh, typical like veteran, uh, visual novel reader always wants to see like what happens if you choose the wrong options, right? I want to see like maybe there's a route where like a path you could take where she doesn't remember anything and then it just ends, you know, in like a horrible way or something. But that's what I was thinking. But anyway, <laughs> something just, am I just imagining things? It's no use. My headache is getting worse. I can't stand anymore. I should lie in the bed for a while. After I lie down, I begin to feel a bit better. I can see cliffs outside. Such a horrible and dreary view. Now I think about it, the Aleutian Islands are far up north. I wonder if the aurora borealis is visible in winter at this time of year. You know, localized entirely outside this window. Huh? Is that an aurora borealis? What am I thinking? It's not night. And there were an aurora borealis, the clouds will hide it, so what is that? A piece of cloth? No, a skirt. A girl? Oh, I assume, yeah, somebody came into the window. What? And there she is, Aurora, I guess, yeah. I knew, I mean, obviously, yeah, we know Giselle had some kind of relationship with Aurora, right? In her, uh, in her past, anyway. 
Ouch, that was close. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. You're tired, aren't you? You can stay in bed if you want. I'm Elizabeth. What's your name? Okay, her real name is Elizabeth. Aurora. Oh, like Aurora Borealis? Is that maybe her nickname? Because she thought about the Aurora Borealis. She, she thought it was... Okay, is that where it came from, maybe? Hmm. Anyway. Instead of her name, I'd rather know how she came to this room through the window. Did she come down the cliffs in that stormy weather? You're surprised I came in through the window, aren't you? Well, I used a rope from the door room next to the one above yours to get down here. The wind blows me sideways, so I can reach this room that way. <laughs> okay, some parallels you draw there, by the way. That sounds dangerous. Just hearing that makes me weak in the knees. Ah, so you, could, you do talk. What's your name? Will you tell me? My name. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if this matters, but I'll just say I. Huh? Mm, then what's wrong? Or don't you want to tell me your name? No, that's not it. But I understand. So many girls here want to forget their names. They all have painful pasts. I bet... Elizabeth isn't my real name either. They named me Elizabeth when I arrived here. Okay, even that is not a real name, but that's what I call her, I guess. I know, I've got a great idea. Why don't you give me, why don't you give me a name? We can use our secret names for each other. Will you please give me a new name? I went through so much trouble to get here after all. What, just whatever comes to mind? Um, how about Aurora? Aurora, the goddess of dawn. I like it. I once played the part of Princess Aurora in a ballet. It's a perfect name. All right, so that's how she got a nickname. How'd you come up with that? Well, I saw your skirt waving outside the window. I thought it was an Aurora Borealis. I know it sounds stupid. Oh, that makes it even better. Well, now that my name is Aurora, don't forget it. I'll pick my last name. Perhaps I'll pick the name of a restaurant from where I used to live. All right, what should your name be? Um, let's see. Aurora, Princess Aurora, ballet. In that case, Giselle. Giselle, as in the ballet character. The girl who once died became a ghost and helped a man. That's lovely. Okay, that's how Giselle got her name. So that was like a fake name as well. Because I feel like I've died once already. Alright, your name is Giselle. By the way, Giselle, you can tell the name you just chose the other girls, but you should never tell that to the people from the mansion. Promise me. I promise. Say, this room appears to be for four people, but why am I only one here? Hmm. It's, um... It's okay, you don't need to tell me. Judging from Aurora's tearful face, all of the other girls died. No, they were killed. That man said it was the third time this month. I remember his words. My body trembles as if I was thousand with cold water. And by the way, I guess, yeah, um, Aurora said, by the way, to not use Giselle as your real name to the staff. Um, I guess, yeah, it makes sense because that means the staff wouldn't recognize Giselle in the present time, I guess. Um, when she was using that name. Hmm. Anyway, if I don't do anything, that could be my fate as well. Are you alright? You're white as a sheet. No, I'm fine. Hey, Aurora, use a rope to come here from upstairs. But uh, how will you get back to your own room? This room's door is locked and you won't be able to climb up that rope. In the evening, the girls in my room will start serving dinner. I can just blend in and return to my room. They keep a less watchful eye during dinner. I see. The security prison isn't as tight as I first thought. But as long as they continue to watch that bridge, I won't be able to get away from here. So I have time until in the evening when they start serving dinner. Let's chat, Giselle. I came to see you because I thought you might be lonely here. Well, no rest for the weary. I brought you your meal. Elizabeth, it's time. Oh, that's too bad. Looks like we're going to talk. Sorry. I have to go. Giselle, things may become difficult, but don't lose hope. Who was that? I mean, yeah, I mean, the door is normally locked, right? But I guess you can just walk out. Was that her friend or or was that one of the staff? I don't know, anyway. All right. Elizabeth, can we go? All right, let's go. And I'm not Elizabeth. My new name's Aurora. Okay, I think, yeah, that's her friend. Okay, that's one of the, I assume one of the other girls that came in to get her. Uh, what are you going on about? That's a nice name, though. This girl will give it to you. It's nice. Give me a new name next time as well. By the way, what's your name? Giselle. All right, Giselle. I'm looking forward to hearing my new name next time. Elizabeth's Aurora's sense of names is old-fashioned. What a horrible thing to say. <laughs> I'll give it some thought. All right, Giselle. See you. Talking is warming out a bit, but I can feel that my tension is eased a little. She's a bit strange, but has a good heart. But I wonder why my stomach clenches up when I see her. When I see her, I feel nostalgic. It's as if I wanted to see her, and that's a feeling I had the whole time. Anyway, I should eat and rest. Things will begin tomorrow. 
and nothing bad will totally happen where you get murdered and tortured and... Hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, this doesn't look good. Yeah, she, I, I assume she, she actually did get beat up. I assume, yeah, the red ribbon means that um, she's used to, like, uh, as, like, torture fun? I, I don't know what you call it. I don't know. They just, I guess, sadistic uh, guess, I guess. Huh. Anyway. Well, I guess we have to live through this horrible past, you know, in order to get to the, the answer that we're looking for, by the way. And that's how to kill, like, an absolute immortal. And I wonder how she... How did, how did Giselle get, get that information in the first place? And how did she even escape, you know? But, well, I guess we'll see. <laughs>